In this video, we're going to talk about quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. So what are they exactly? Quartiles divides the data into four equal parts. What I like to think about is quarters. Four quarters adds up to one dollar. Now let's draw a number line. And we're going to go from zero to a hundred. But let's divide the number line into four equal parts. So this is the first part, second, third, and the fourth part. This is Q1, this is Q2, and here we have Q3, or the third quartile. On the left, this is the zeroth percentile. The first quartile is the 25th percentile. The second quartile is the 50th percentile. And the third quartile is the 75th percentile. And this goes up to 100. Percentiles divides the data into 100 equal parts. Think of percentage. 100% represents the total of everything. Q2 is basically the median of the entire data. Q1 is the median of the lower half of the data. And Q3 is the median of the upper half of the data. Now let's talk about deciles. Deciles divide the data into 10 equal parts. Think of a decimeter. A decimeter is basically one tenth of a meter, which means that it takes 10 decimeters to equal one meter. So when you hear the word deci, think of a tenth. So a decile is basically one tenth of the data. So it takes 10 deciles to cover the entire data. So let's break up this data into 10 equal parts. So this is going to be D1. This is D0. D2, D3 is the third decile, D4, the fourth decile. Now Q2 is the same as D5, and this is D6, D7, D8, D9, D10. So what you need to know, for instance, is D4 represents the 40th percentile. In this example, D5 is the 50th percentile which is the same as the second quartile. So we can write the percentage values here. So D1 is the 10th percentile, D2 is the 20th percentile, D3 is the 30th, D4 is the 40th, D6 is the 60th, and so forth. So D9 will be the 90th percentile. So now you can visually see how quartiles, deciles, and percentiles divide the data into different equal parts. Now, what is the meaning of a percentile? Have you thought about that? The 70th percentile, for example, is a data point where 70% of the entire data is less than or equal to the data point. Now, it can also mean that 30% of the data is greater than or equal to the data point. So what do we mean? Let's use a visual example. So this would be 0, this would be 70, and this would be 100. So let's say if you took the SAT exam and your score ranks among the 70th percentile. So your score is right here. Now, 70% of students had a score that is equal to or less than your score. So basically, you scored better than 70% of the students who took the SAT at that time. However, 30% of the students who took the SAT did equal to or better than you did on the exam. And so that's what the 70th percentile tells you. It tells you that 70% of the data is less than the 70th percentile, but 30% of the data 
is greater than the 70th percentile, or it could be equal to it as well. So now you know the meaning behind a percentile. Now let's say if we have the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 11, 13, 15, 16, and 19. How can we find the three quartiles in this list of numbers? So what is the first, second, and third quartile? The best thing to do is to find the second quartile first. The second quartile is basically the median of the entire data set. And so let's find a middle number. We can eliminate the first two and then the last two until we get the number in the middle, which in this case is 10. So I'm going to get rid of the 10. I'm going to separate the data into two equal parts. And I'm going to put the 10 right here. So 10 is our Q2 value. That is the median of the entire data set. Q1 is the median of the lower half of the data set. So Q1 is 5. As you can see, 5 is the middle number of these five numbers. Now what about Q3? Q3 is the median of the upper half of the data set. So the middle number is 15. So that is the third quartile. Now it turns out that there's another way in which we can calculate Q1, Q2, and Q3 using percentiles. Keep in mind Q1 is basically the value of the 25th percentile. To find the location of a percentile, it's equal to K divided by 100 times n plus 1. So n is basically the number of data items in your list, or the number of numbers in the set. K is basically the subscript. So if you want to find the 25th percentile, K is 25. So let's illustrate this with an example. So let's find the location of the 25th percentile. So it's going to be 25 divided by 100, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers in the list. So n is 11. So let's get the answer. What is 25 over 100? 100 divided by 25 is 4. So 25 divided by 100 is 1 fourth. And 11 plus 1 is 12. So we have 12 divided by 4, which is 3. So what does this number tell us? The 3 indicates that the first quartile is in the third position. It's the third item from the left. So this is the first item. This is the second item. This is the third item. So the third number from the left is 5, which is our first quartile, as we can see here. And so that's how you're supposed to use the formula. Now let's try another example. Let's calculate the second quartile. So the second quartile is basically the 50th percentile, which we know to be 10. So let's determine the location of the 50th percentile. So it's k divided by 100, or 50 divided by 100, times n plus 1. So n is not going to change. It's still 11 for this list. So 50 divided by 100, that's basically 0.5. Or we could say it's 1 over 2. 11 plus 1 is 12. Half of 12 is 6. So the second quartile is basically the sixth item from the left. So this is the fourth item. This is the fifth item. And we can see here this is the sixth item, which is 10. And so that is the second quartile. If you wish to calculate the third quartile, it's basically the 75th percentile, which we know to be 15. So using the same formula, 
we're going to calculate the location of the, the 75th percentile. So it's 75 over 100 times 11 plus 1. 75 over 100, if you divide both numbers by 25, you could reduce it to 3 over 4. Now, 12 divided by 4 is 3 times the 3 on top. That gives us 9. So 3 fourths of 12 is 9. So the ninth data point in this case is going to be 15, which is the third quartile. Let's try another example. So this time we have an even number of items in this list. So let's determine the first, second, and the third quartile. So let's split the data into two equal parts. So here we have eight numbers on the left and eight numbers on the right. So this time, the median is going to be the average of 15 and 16. If we add those two numbers and then divide by two, this will give us the midpoint or the average of those two numbers, which is 15.5. So that is our second quartile. Now, to find the first quartile, we need to find the middle number of the numbers on the left. Now they're even, so we're going to split it here so that we have 4 on the left, 4 on the right. So the median is going to be the average of 9 and 11. 9 plus 11 is 20 divided by 2, that's 10. So 10 is the first quartile. Now, let's split the data on the right into two equal parts. And so the average of 19 and 20 is going to be 19.5. 19.5 is right in the middle of 19 and 20. So that's our third quartile. Now, let's see if we can calculate that using the same process that we did before. So let's calculate the location of the 25th percentile. So it's K divided by 100, in which case k is 25, and there's 16 numbers in this list. We have 4, 4, 4, and 4. So n is 16. So this is going to be 16 plus 1. So it's 1 fourth of 17. Now, 17 divided by 4, that is not going to give us a whole number. In fact, we're going to get a decimal number. So what is the 4.25 value? Well, that's hard to tell. When you get a situation like this, you need to round up and down. You need to look at the fourth value and the fifth value. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth value. The fourth value is 9, and the fifth value is 11. So if you average 4 and 5, it will give you 10. I mean, if you average 9 and 11, it will give you 10. And so this is the location. Well, the location of the 25th percentile is this number. But the value of the 25th percentile is 10, which is Q1. So that's how you could use this formula to help get you this answer. Now let's use the same process to calculate Q3. So Q3 is the 75th percentile, which has a value of 19.5. So let's determine the location of the 75th percentile. So it's 75 divided by 100 times 16 plus 1. So it's 3 fourths of 17. 17 times 3 divided by 4 is 12.75. So this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So we can see that 12.75 is between these two numbers. So it's going to make sense to average them. So when you get a number like this, you need to identify the 12th value, which is 19 in this case, as we see here, and the 13th value, which is 20. And so the 75th percentile 
is going to be the average of the 12th and the 13th value. So we're going to take 19 and add it to 20 and then divide by 2. So we get 39 divided by 2, which is 19.5. Here's another example using this list of numbers. Let's say if we want to calculate the value of the 6 decile, how can we do so? The 6 decile is basically the 60th percentile. And so first we need to calculate the location of the 60th percentile. So it's going to be 60 divided by 100 times 16 plus 1. So it's basically 0 0.6 times 17, which is 10.2. So the 60th percentile is going to be the average of the 10th number and the 11th number, because 10.2 is between the 10th and the 11th number. And then we're going to divide it by 2. So the 10th value we can see is 16. And the 11th value is 17. The midpoint between 16 and 17 is 16.5. So this is the 60th percentile based on the data that we have here. That is, of course, if we follow the same process as we've been doing. However, I'm inclined to think that the 60th percentile is based on the 10th value in the list. Well, for one thing, 10 is very close to 10.2. And a 10th value in the list is 16. And here's why I'm inclined to think about it intuitively. The second quartile is the 50th percentile. The third quartile is the 75th percentile. So it's clear to see that our answer should be somewhere in this region. So 16.5 is not a bad estimate. However, if we split this in the middle, the midpoint between 50 and 75, if you add them up and divide by 2, that should give you 62.5. And 60 is to the left of 62.5, which puts it more closer to 16 than to 17. Now, granted, the calculations will not be perfect because n is small, but as you increase your n value, as you increase the number of numbers in a list, these calculations become more accurate. So keep that in mind. Now there's something else that we can do with this list of numbers. So far, we talked about finding the value of a percentile. For instance, the value of the 50th percentile is 15.5. But what if we're given the value? How can we find a percentile that corresponds to that value. So let's use let's use 12 for example. Now we know that 12 is between the 25th percentile and the 50th percentile. Would you say this is the 30th percentile, the 40th percentile, the 35th percentile? What would you say? Well, if we're going to ballpark it, the average between 25 and 50 is 37.5. So it makes sense that 12 is between the 25th percentile and the 37.5 percentile. But let's see if we can do some math to get the answer. To find it, you could use this formula. It's x plus 0.5y divided by n times 100. So what is x? In this formula, x is the number of numbers that is less than 12. So all these numbers are less than 12. So there's five numbers less than 12. Thus, x is 5. y is the number of times this number appears. There's only one 12, so y is going to be 1. If there were two 12s, y would be 2. 
Now, n is the number of numbers in the list. We know we have a total of 16 numbers. We got 4 in each quadrant. And then we're going to multiply everything by 100. So this is basically 5.5 .5 divided by 16 times 100. 5.5 5 divided by 16 is 0.34375. So times 100, this is 34.375. Now let's round it to the nearest whole number. So therefore, we could say that the 34th percentile is equal to 12. Or we could say that 12 is the 34th percentile. And thus, that is how we could find it. And it makes sense because 34 is between 25 and 37.5. So that's a good approximation. Let's try another example. What about the number 16, the ninth data point in the list? What is the percentile that corresponds to that number? Now we know it's going to be between 50 and 62.5. But feel free to pause the video and calculate the answer. There's no need for me to retype that formula. So P of what subscript number is equal to the first 16 that we see? Well, first let's determine X. X is the number of items that is less than this 16 value. So notice that we have eight numbers to the left of this number. So the x value is 8. Now, y is the number of times 16 appears, because 16 is the number that we're focused on. Notice that there's two 16s. In this case, it's going to be 2. n is still 16, and then times 100. So 0.5 times 2 is 1, plus 8, that's 9. So this is going to be 9 over 16 times 100. And so this is going to be 56.25. And so we're going to round this to 56. So 16 is the 56th percentile. Or we could say that the 56th percentile is equal to 16. Now, does this answer make sense? Well, let's see. 16 is between 50 and 62.5. And 56 is between 50 and 62.5. So saying that the first 16 is the 56th percentile is reasonable. It makes sense based on the data that we see here. Now there's one more thing we need to talk about. And that is the ability to make a cumulative relative frequency table and then to use it in order to calculate percentile values. So let's work on this example. Let's create a cumulative relative frequency table and then let's calculate the fourth, the seventh, the third, and the sixth decile in that order. So to make a cumulative relative frequency table we need four columns. The first one will contain the value, the second will be the frequency, the third will be the relative frequency, and the fourth column will contain the cumulative relative frequency values. So the lowest value in this list is 2. Now how many times does 2 appear? 1, 2 times. So the frequency is 2. Now the next highest value is a 3. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 threes in this list. Now the next value in the list is 4. So we have 1, 2, 3 fours in the list. Next up, we don't have a 5, but the next number is a 6. And so there's only two sixes that I've counted. Now we do have a seven, only one of them. 
the next number is a 9. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 nines. And I'm going to need some extra space here. And then we have a 10. It turns out we have two 10s. And the last number is a 12. But there's only one 12. Now, our next step is to take the sum of the frequency column. So 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11, and then 12, 17, 19, 20. So this tells us that we have a total of 20 items in our list. The next step is to calculate the relative frequency. To do this, take the frequency and divide it by the total frequency, or the total number of items. 2 divided by 20 is 0.10. 4 divided by 20, that's going to be 0.20. 3 divided by 20 is 0.15. 2 divided by 20 is 0.10. 1 divided by 20 is 0 0.05. 5 divided by 20, that's 0.25, and 2 over 20 is 0.10, 1 over 20 is 0 0.05. Now, if you add all of these numbers, you should get 1.00, which I'll mark in red. Now, let's calculate the cumulative relative frequency. So first, we're going to start with this number, 0.10. And then we're going to add 0.10 and the next relative frequency, which is 0.20. So this is going to give us 0.30. And then add 0.30 plus 0.15. So that's going to be 0.45. And then add 0.45 plus 0.10. So that's 0.55. And then add in those two, this is going to be 0.60. 0.60 plus 0.25, that's 0.85, and 0.85 plus 0.10, that's 0.95, and then the last one is going to be 1 when you add 0.95 and 0.05. So that's how you can calculate the cumulative relative frequency. Now let's use it to calculate the deciles that we have listed here. So let's start with the fourth decile. D4. The fourth decile we know to be the 40th percentile. The 40th percentile corresponds to a cumulative relative frequency of 0.4. Notice that 0.4 is somewhere between 0.3 and 0.45. So here is a question for you. Will the 40th percentile be equal to 3 or will it be equal to 4? or will it be equal to the average of 3 and 4? Which one of these three options is correct? Now, you need to understand that the 30th percentile, it ends with the last three out of the four threes that we have here, and it begins with the first four out of the three fours that we have here. So if you want to find the 30th percentile exactly, it's really the average of 3 and 4. However, if you want to find a percentile that is between two cumulative relative frequency values, it's going to be the higher of the two numbers. 4 is between a percentile of 30 and 45. The value 6 is between a percentile of 0.45 and 0.55, or 45 and 55. So the, the ninth value, or the value of 9, is between the 60th percentile and the 85th percentile. But if you want to find, let's say, the 85th percentile, it is the average of 9 and 10. And I'm going to explain why, visually, so you can see it. So because the 40th percentile is between these two numbers, it's going to be 4. The 30th percentile ends with 3, but it begins with 4. So the 40th percentile has to equal 4.
Now, what about the seventh decile or the 70th percentile? What is the value that corresponds to that? So the 70th percentile has a cumulative relative frequency of 0.7, which is between 0.60 and 0.85. Now keep in mind the 60th percentile ends with 7 and begins with 9. So the 70th percentile has to be one of the five nines that we have here. So it's going to equal 9. Now what about the third decile? So that's the 30th percentile. Notice that we do have an exact value here. A cumulative relative frequency of 0 0.30. So 0 0.3, or the 30th percentile, it ends with the last three, and it begins with the first four. So in this case, it's going to be the average of those two numbers. So the 30th percentile will be 3.5. Now what about the 6th decile, or the 60th percentile? Notice that we have that exact number in our chart, or in our table. So thus, it's going to be the average of these two. The 60th percentile ends with the last 7 and starts with the first 5. So the average of 7 and 9, I meant to say it ends with the last 7 but starts with the first 9. So that's the average of those two numbers is going to be 8. Now let's confirm these answers. Let's see if we can make sense of it. So we said that the fourth decile is 4. The seventh decile is 9. The third decile is 3.5. And the sixth decile is 8. Now let's go ahead and put this list in increase in order. You could also use the cumulative relative frequency table that we had to do this as well. So if you go back to it, we said that we had two twos and we had four threes and we had two sixes. We had a seven and we have five nines. And then we have two tens, and we have a one twelve. It looks like I'm missing something. I'm missing the fours. So let's go back. There were three fours. And then we had two sixes, one seven, and then five nines. And then there were two tens and a 12. So notice that I'm grouping everything in pairs. Because I have 20 numbers, and I want to divide it into 10 equal parts. So you could see what the deciles are. So this is going to be the first decile. This is the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, 8, 9, 10. And we can say this is 0. So let's start with the fourth decile, which we said was 4. So here's D4. Notice to the left is a 4, and to the right, it's a 4. So the fourth decile, or the 40th percentile, is 4. So because they were the same, we didn't really have to average any numbers. Now, Let's talk about the seventh decile. So here's the seventh decile. To the left, we have a nine. To the right, we had a nine. So as we could see, it's one of the five nines that we have in our list. So this answer is accurate. Now the third decile is between two different numbers, as we could see here. It ends with the last three, and it begins with the first four. So thus we average three and four and get 3.5. Now the situation is the same for the sixth decile. As we could see, it ends with the last seven and begins with the first nine. So it's the average of seven and nine, giving us eight. 
So hopefully that makes sense. And now you have a better understanding of quartiles, deciles, and percentiles. And you know how to find them given a list of numbers. Thanks for watching.